I'm here today with something a little different. We're gonna take a look at the Z790 Tai Chi Carrera. Carrera Marble. <laughs> Okay, it's a Z790 chipset, LGA1700, the new 13900K Victory Lap Edition, I guess. But it's actually a little bit more subtle and nuanced than that. There's a lot going on here with Z790, and not necessarily everything what you think. And we're also going to do a build with this because I need our, you know, uh, 13th generation test platform. It's going to be sort of a permanent fixture in the office. Well, <laughs> permanent being until the next thing comes out a year or two. Gosh, the 12th gen lasted just about a year. Not quite. Woo -hoo, competition in the market. All right, let's dive in. All right, first up, let's take a deeper look at our Z790 motherboard. If you're not in the know, 12th gen CPUs came out with the Z690 chipset. And there was also the 660 chipset, which is lower cost, but doesn't support overclocking, but you can still juice it, meaning that you give it a lot of extra power. And it's like an overclock, but it's not exactly an overclock. It's multiplier locked, meaning you can't give it more multipliers. So like if your 5.1 gigahertz is your top P-Core performance, you're not gonna get more than that on a, on a B660 motherboard, but you could on Z690. Well, Z790 is out. It's a relatively minor upgrade from the Z690 chipset. You can use a 13th generation CPU, a 13900K, 13700K, 13600K, you can use all of those on Z690 motherboards. You just need a BIOS update in order to do it. And most motherboards will let you update the BIOS even if you don't have a processor. You have to make a USB stick formatted a certain way. You put it in, there's a button on the back, and that'll flash support for it. Or if your local computer store can help you, they can also help you upgrade your BIOS by you know letting you borrow a CPU. But most Z690 motherboards will let you upgrade from a BIOS. Well, more than half. Probably between 60 and 80%, give or take, something like that. But Z790 natively supports 13th gen, so if you buy a Z790 motherboard, it's gonna come with support for all 13th generation CPUs out of the box. But why would you want to? Z690 motherboards are pretty much universally cheaper than Z790, so it'll, it'll work, and they've got similar features, a lot of them. Well, one reason you might upgrade to Z790 is memory compatibility. In this case, ASRock supports DDR5 up to 6600 with an OC. Now the 13th gen actually legitimately does have an improved memory controller. And when I was testing the DDR4 component of it, I actually tested the 13600K on a DDR4 motherboard. And that was our ASRock Steel Legend. But it was possible to get an even better DDR4 overclock on a different DDR4 board than our Steel Legend board. And that was really interesting because I figured that they'd only improved the DDR5 memory controller in 13th gen, but no, both DDR4 and DDR5 are improved in 13th gen. So if your motherboard can do it, the CPU can do it. So not all motherboards were able to go as high as DDR5 6600. That's a pretty nice upgrade. Now Intel will say there's two big features of Z790. Two more 10 gigabit USB ports. And also it supports more PCIe 4 lanes. Okay, look, have you seen motherboards lately, Intel? Look at this. There's two PCI Express 5 slots to the CPU and one at the bottom. No one is putting those PCIe lanes into slots. So it doesn't matter. It's like, oh, one of the big features of Z790. No one is actually building motherboards to take advantage of those more PCIe lanes. So certainly this motherboard comes packing M.2. So we get two at the bottom, two at the midboard, and one blazing, as ASRock calls it, PCI Express 5.0 M.2. So you've got two PCI Express 5.0 X16 slots. That's X8, X8 electrical or X16, X0, depending on how you use it. And then the bottom slot is PCI Express 4.0 through the chipset. So yeah, ASRock had to add a re-driver to this board in order to be able to support PCI Express 4. That's pretty cool. PCI Express 4x4 through the chipset. The chipset lane, as you recall, is an eight lane PCI Express 4.0 interface. So the chipset interface on these Intel platforms doesn't really have a bottleneck at this point, which is nice. Even a mostly fully populated system, it's not really gonna bottleneck that chipset, even with all these 10 gig USB and our LAN connection and everything else. Now there's a bit of a chip shortage in terms of really high speed LAN interfaces. So we are rocking a 2.5 gigabit NIC along with a one gigabit NIC. Would've been nice to see maybe 10 gigabit, but it's sorta of hard to get your hands on 10 gigabit chipsets these days. Intel's in short supply and a Quantia is also in short supply. So <laughs> just waiting on somebody else to spool up their networking division with new networking cards. Hmm, who might that be? 
Let's take a closer look at our rear I.O. We get two USB 2 ports, HDMI, your antenna ports for your killer 802.11ax Wi-Fi 6E, that is 4, 5, and 6 gigahertz, our analog microphone in, analog speakers out, optical SPDIF, USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A and USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A, including the yellow ports, which are you know power stabilized, which is really pretty cool. That's the ultra power USB, as ASRock calls it. Then we've got our gigabit LAN and our 2.5 gigabit LAN. Then we've got two more 5 gigabit USB ports and our Thunderbolt interface. Yes, Thunderbolt right here on this platform. So 40 gigabit, that is also uh, display port alt mode. So you can use that for video out with your onboard IGPU on your Intel. If you're into that sort of thing. So two displays out plus HDMI. It's pretty cool, pretty cool for a motherboard spread. This is Thunderbolt 4, it's still 40 gigabit. Now our audio solution is based around the ALC 4082. That is the latest generation Realtek audio codec. And ASRock has added the ESS Sabre 9218 DAC with Wyma audio caps for their Nehemic audio solution. Very nice. The motherboard also features a really robust backplane and that is connected to the VRM via thermal pads. So extra heat sink, extra cooling. The power delivery on this motherboard is a 24 plus two plus one power phase design with uh, SPS for vCore and the graphics. Bottom line, if you wanna see six gigahertz out of your 13th generation CPUs with the rumored six gigahertz out of the box the CPUs coming, those are gonna be just super, super bend 13900Ks. So Intel right now is reserving all of the best 13900Ks for the upcoming 13900KS. That's a rumor, I don't know that. I haven't said anything about that, but that's probably what's going on. So your 13900K, I personally have been able to achieve six gigahertz with uh, relative ease, pretty good stability but that was on a custom loop system with a chonker 360 millimeter radiator. We're gonna do another build in just a minute with the Arctic uh, Liquid Freezer 2, and that is a 420 millimeter cooler, and that's going to be something, but more on that in a minute. Also in the box, ASRock includes this marble-themed cooling fan, 120 millimeter cooling fan, if you choose to use that in your build. And do keep in mind, if you're going to build a system around this motherboard, it is EATX. Speaking of which, Let's do a build. It's been 20 years of be quiet. So we have a screwdriver and a bottle opener. I've got some bad news, be quiet. Linus might've beat you to the screwdriver, but hey, look at that. There's a be quiet screwdriver and bottle opener. Thanks, be quiet. <laughs> We're gonna do a build with a be quiet system. Happy 20th. Mainly because it's a no nonsense case that will also store not only our monster 420 millimeter radiator, but also a GPU, even if it has a built-in AIO, you can put that in the top, and that'll be pretty awesome. Let's take a look. This is our Be Quiet Silent Base 802. Oh my gosh! It's uh, it's held up really well. I've had it in the in the office for a long time. A lot of the time with white cases, it's really hard to match the white powder coat with the white plastic. So the biggest oh, there goes a fan. Or, screw. So the biggest thing you got to watch out for is does the plastic fade? This has been in my office running Linux and doing some tests for several months, many months. And you can see the color of the white plastic has changed a little bit, but not too much for my taste. Sometimes they turn really yellow and it's really kind of off-putting. I think Be Quiet's done a good job with their plastic accessories here. The other stuff, like these cable covers and that sort of thing, Be Quiet's doing pretty good. So this is the Dark Base 820. I think this is a good choice for Intel 13th generation. And the reason I think it's a good choice is because of our giant, giant, Arctic cooler that's in the front here. Not only do we have all of that room at the front for our giant 420 millimeter AIO for our CPU, if our GPU has an AIO, we can mount that in the top. Whether the GPU uses a dual 140 or a dual 120 cooler, so 240 or 280 millimeters, there's enough room for that at the top. Right now I've got three Be Quiet Silent Wings 2 fans in there. Those are the inexpensive version of the Be Quiet fans. They do a really good job. And they're gonna need to when we put a thousand watts of stuff in here. For the power supply, we're using a thousand watt Be Quiet. Why a thousand watts? Well, the 1200 watt was hard to get a hold of. And the white case should go great with our marble color scheme. What? Somebody set a trap for me. Behold, this is our retail Core i9 CPU that I paid money for. How crazy is that? Listen, we have to check, you know, you get the CPU early ahead of time. Thanks, Intel. But, you know, you never know. If your CPU is a really good CPU, so just as a best practice, 
I always get one retail of the flagship CPU just to see how that goes. So yeah, it's a, they never send the retail packaging either. So here's the retail packaging. Let's get, let's get there's little wafers in it. It's like a less ostentatious version of the 12900KS. So it's like, ooh, look, it's a wafer. It's cool. Okay. LGA 1700 kit, go! My battery's dying, no! Boom, installed. Then we just mount our motherboard. Well, uh, one thing I forgot to mention in the motherboard accessory bundle is the giant M.2 heatsink with a fan. It's extra fancy. So it turns out PCI Express 5 SSDs will use a lot of power and generate a lot of heat. This is active cooling for your M.2, it's PCIe 5 if you need it. Oh, there's also a USB 2 header in here. A USB 2 header breakout if you need more USB 2 ports. It's nice that ASRock includes that. I think somebody criticized them for not having enough USB ports and they said, all right, fine, we'll include a, a breakout header so you can take one of the headers on the motherboard to the back of the case. I appreciate it. Or I die, nah. All right, for the memory on this build, we're gonna be using Kingston Fury Beast DDR5. This is a DDR5 6000 kit. Got plenty of headroom on this motherboard. Remember, we could go to 6600 OC. We're gonna go to 6000 OC. Now with DDR5 memory, you wanna be really careful not to rock the memory back and forth as you install it. Because the memory doesn't get soldered all the way through the motherboard, it's surface mount. These DIMM slots are a lot more um, fragile. So you wanna be really careful. You really wanna do it flat on the desk before you install the motherboard and install it this way. Maybe just cover this with B-roll. Now we've got our motherboard installed. We need to mount the power supply and finish running the wires, but you can see that even if we're gonna rock a monster card like a 4090, there's plenty of room in our Be Quiet 820. Now I don't have my upgraded cabling, but this is the RTX 4090. So our our Be Quiet 802, you can see, even though the case has been out before the 4090, there's still plenty of room, even with this monster 4090 from Zotac in there. But it's not quite time to mount this yet. Next up, power supply. Let's talk power supply. It's Be Quiet. It's Be Quiet Straight Power 11. They've got a new model with new, more silent fans, and it's modular. Modularity, I mean, it's cool. It's a nice feature. It's basically standard issue on power supplies that are above 750 watts because you need that if you're going to have the highest end CPU and the highest end GPU. Actually, I wouldn't recommend doing a build with less than a thousand watt power supply if you're going to shell out for the highest end CPU and GPU. The rub though, like if there's Zotac 4090, you have this little power plug. This thing is really fiddly. You can't bend it too much, really more than about that much. So this is gonna be rubbing up against the side glass of our dark base 802 case, which is unfortunate. The other thing that really sucks is that Zotac has uh, made really super insanely short cables with this, and I really would have liked much longer pigtails in order to do this. So you can eschew all of those problems by getting a 4090 <coughs> adapter for your Be Quiet Straight Power 11 power supply, which I think you can reach out to Be Quiet and get. I don't have mine yet. Maybe they're not finished with it. But it's coming because that's the advantage of a modular power supply. You can shove one cable in here and then get this little miniature connector that goes directly into your GPU on the other end. And it does need to have the sense pins, otherwise your GPU is gonna be limited to 400 and some watts instead of 600 watts with the unlocked power limit. So, because, you know, again, you got the highest end GPU, right? All right, let's get this mounted. Ta-da, now we have six dangly six pin power connections because, you know, 1,000 watt power supply. The 1,200 would have been eight, but hey, it's fine. Would you say we're ready for our GPU now? Don't forget Zotac includes an anti-sag bracket because that's kind of a thing that needs to be now. Ta-da, now we have a GPU. Don't forget to connect your front panel. You know, your power button and reset and all that kind of stuff. It's not a bad looking build. Let's get it powered up and see what it does. Would you say it's marvelous? He's really reaching for his buttons these days. Yeah, I know. Hard times. 
And remember, this is DDR5, so our first boot is uh, probably going to be a little slow. Now, as with all new builds, the BIOS is probably out of date. You want to update the BIOS. Sometimes you can flash it from the internet, but really, you should probably have a USB stick ready to go. You should also check your hardware sensors. You can check your CPU temperature and your memory temperature, motherboard temperature. If the computer's been on a few minutes and you got something wrong with your CPU cooler mounting pressure or you didn't do the thermal paste right or something like that, you could see some stuff in the sensors here in BIOS. And it says, oh, the CPU's super hot. Our 13900K is only 83. So, I mean, it's not running at full tilt insanity in the BIOS screen. 83, that sounds kind of hot. For the civilized world, that's 23.5. <laughs> we got our freedom units. Freedom units. All right, here's what the build sounds like with all of the fans plugged in and operating properly. It is being quiet. Pro tip with these 4090s, do not move the power cables while the system is on. Be sure your system is fully put together. That's one of the things that causes the melting burning that we've seen so much of on the, the internet. I'm not sure if you can pick that up in the mic, but this is astonishingly quiet at idle for such a powerful system. And notice that our build has a minimum of RGB. We can disable the lighting on our GPU and we'll be good to go. Or the lighting in the GPU can be the focus, whichever way you want to roll, it's fine. Well, this has been a quick build with our 13th generation, 13900K. Be sure to check out our specs and parts list and use our affiliate links to order and all that sort of fun stuff. That kind of stuff really helps the channel a lot. Join Patreon and Flowplane if you want to, leave a comment, engage. I'm Wendell, this is level one. I have a lot of fun. This is a fun hobby. It's uh, a lot of fun putting computers together and just, it's like, oh, here we go. There, This one's gonna work pretty good. We're gonna use this for testing all of our uh, GPUs, including upcoming GPUs that may or may not be PCIe Gen 5. This is the platform we'll be using for Intel Raptor Lake 13900K. And we probably push six gigahertz on this, but that's gonna be a different video. Yeah.